Hello, welcome back to SharePoint Charts Complete Training. In this session, we're going to look at flow charts. This is a fun one. Everybody likes a colorful visual diagram um, to show what's going on. So rather than quantifying numbers as we do with most of our charting, this is simply demonstrating a process. And this is something that all of us can relate to. So let's go ahead and jump in. All right, so I'm back to my charts training site. And as with our other sessions, you want to go to the uh, SharePoint dashboards uh, charts complete training and go to your flow chart section. And that shows you a little preview of what we're going to be making. This chart works through multiple rows of data. And uh, like our last training session, we need to have the add and customize pages option enabled for our site. That does need to be done by a SharePoint admin. Um, so for any reason you didn't do that preceding training, you do need to uh, follow the directions. Note that that only needs to be done once. So if you already did the previous training, you're all set. You don't need to worry about that. Next, you need to download the flowchart STP file. This is a SharePoint list template and we're going to need to load that because this template works directly from that. So I've already downloaded that to my local uh, computer and that's my first step. I need to go to my gear icon and go to site information and then view all site settings and because I enabled that feature, I'm going to see this option under Web Designer Galleries. If you don't see Web Designer Galleries and list templates under that, it means that you have not enabled that. Uh, once again, you need to follow the directions on the page and get assistance from your SharePoint admin. All right, and then in list templates, you can see I already loaded org chart. That was the last training session. In this one, we're going to be loading the flow chart template. So I'm going to go to Files, then Upload Document, and I'm going to browse to that template, which is on my local computer. There we go. And just hit OK. All the defaults are fine here, and I'll save. So now this is available for use to create lists. So let me return back to my home page, and now I need to go to site contents um, you can just click on the link on your site navigation or from the gear um, you can find site contents there and then i need to make a new list for my flow chart and when i'm doing a list template i have to use the special classic view um, and so once i'm in that classic view i can go ahead and click on add an app and then I will click on uh, my template. I just need to scroll to find that. We're looking for flowchart. And there it is. That's my new list template. So I just click on that. And um, whoops. <laughs> I don't know what that's about. Let me uh, refresh my page. I don't know if it's because I just loaded it. Okay, now it's more happy with me. Okay, so I'm just going to call it flowchart and click create. Okay, there's flowchart. Once I've done that, I don't want to be in classic experience. I need to get rid of that. So just click on exit classic experience. And now we're back to the regular modern view and then click on flowchart. And as I like to do with all my charts, I want to have a handy link to this from my home page. So Let's go ahead and add a link here. So I'm going to edit the home page and I'm going to add a quick link and paste in my URL. Okay, and then I want to name this flowchart and let's pick an icon for that. I don't know whether there's a flowchart kind of diagram. There is. Um, well, I'll just use, oh, here we go. That's a good one. That looks similar to what I'm going to do. Okay, so there's flowchart. Close that on the right, and then I'm going to select this and drag it to the end. 
and republish. And that just makes it easy for me to get to this. Like the org chart template, we need to have at least one record in here just to get things rolling. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a record and I'm gonna just call this um, help tickets and um, put new request. That's it, I just can put the simple information um, and we need to do that, as I said, just to get the ball rolling in order that something will be displayed. Now we're gonna need a couple of views here. There is a edit mode for working on your uh, flow chart and then additional to that, we're gonna have a display mode, which is non-editable, which is what you will show to your users. So I need to get that set up. I'm gonna do save view as, and then um, first one will be flow chart edit and then I'll do one more view and I'll call that um, well I've already got a flow chart view that came with the uh, list view template or excuse me the the SharePoint list template what we just installed so I've got the views that I need okay so now we can go over to SharePoint dashboard so what you should do is just click on the link in the training which links you over to the flowchart template and then we can access that. Um, this doesn't have a lot of settings because you're going to be doing all the configuration in your SharePoint site uh, for each of those uh, blocks in your diagram if you want to think about it that way. Really the only thing I'm doing is just doing some basic stuff on the background canvas and then um, you know, adjusting the size of that, that type of thing. And then obviously the chart title. So let's put help ticket process. And then we'll do edit mode first. Let's, let's make it a little bigger just so we've got more room to work with. So I'm gonna do 1000 and 750. Um, it just makes this um, background box a little bigger. It gives us more room that's all that i need to do so this one's in edit mode that's a key setting for this because like i say you're going to need two separate views you're going to need an edit view where you're going to be building your flow chart and then you'll have a second view which is non-editable so let's do the edit view first and i'm just going to follow the directions in the box and um, go to flow chart edit and format current view, advanced mode, select all, paste, and save. All right, <laughs> not a very interesting looking flow chart at the moment, but that's okay. We're gonna get there in a second. Let's go and get our regular flow chart set up while we're at it. So I'm gonna do, go to format current view, advanced mode, whoops, and then let's go to Disable edit mode. This is gonna be the display mode for our users. I'm going to copy that and then select all and paste. Okay, now what you'll notice, it doesn't have that yellow when I highlight. This is non-editable. That's what we're looking for. Um, so I'm gonna make my changes in the edit view and those will automatically propagate over. Um, so let's look at how this works a little bit. So I've got this new request, so um, what it says is click on the lower right to edit, and then I've got an interface where I can do things like uh, move my item, and then I can do things like uh, change the shape. Um, we've got all kinds of shapes. It kind of gives you a preview to show you what that would look like, so I can make that a circle, and then I can do things like change the background color. Lots of options there. Um, but each one of those is individually configurable. Um, I can change the font size to something that, you know, matches what I'm in. And then, um, you know, I can make um, other adjustments like that. Now, obviously in a flow chart, we have lines, you know, indicating things moving in different directions. So um, we're just gonna have a line going out the right side. Um, and then let's go ahead and put a new part of our process here. So I'm gonna do um, chart name, uh, what do we do? Help ticket 
process. And that's useful for filtering because you might be doing multiple different flowcharts for your list. So if you, by using the chart name, you can set up your views to have filters. So that's where that would be useful. Um, so let's put help team response. Okay, and we'll say that one's gonna be on row two, column two. And usually I just like to get it created just to get the ball rolling and then I'll make additional updates. So I wanna have an arrow going from the left to the right. And the way you do that is you have arrows going into the item. So um, this connector box is what helps me do that. So you've got a connector on the left, the top, the right, and the bottom. Um, and all of them have that type of setup. And obviously I wanna make this look visually interesting. So for this one, maybe I'll do a slightly different background color. Um, you know, it could be according to, you know, which group is handling that. So um, I made that orange. And then, you know, maybe I wanna have a process above that. Um, so let's do another thing for, let's say, help ticket updates. Okay, I'll say ticket updates. I'll shorten that up a little bit. And that's gonna be on the first row in the second column. And again, just go ahead and you know do those simple settings when you first um, put it in there. And um, then you can make those adjustments. Now you notice it did something a little funny. I just refreshed the web page. If you have any display issue, just do that. Just do a refresh and you'll see what you're looking for. Um, so. Um, just to show some of the different shapes, I'll make that a different shape. Um, now, if it's a decision, usually when you're doing this, that would be a diamond. Um, so you can choose that type of shape if you want to. So it shows you these different options here. And um, it's really fast and easy. I can just make little tweaks. Every adjustment I make, you'll see a real-time update. And then the bottom connector, I have an arrow going into that. So I select that. And then I need to go back to my second step i need to have the line going up out of that now everything's all connected together um, for ticket updates i want to make a different background color for that so why don't we do a light blue for that one so do background color um, let's do i'll do that one cornflower blue okay um, and generally you want to kind of make that text you know, a little bigger, make it stand out in there. It just makes it nicer to look at. Um, and maybe if I have a dark colored background, I want to have a light colored text. You see how that looks a little bit better? And you just keep making tweaks to it. So same thing here. I want to have a little bit bigger text. Basically, I'm going to make this as big as I can to where it still fits in the box and it, it doesn't look unusual, that type of thing. So you can see that makes it a lot easier to read. So now I'm building out a process and I can make this as big as I want. And all I need to do is just, um, you know, keep adding items. So I can say, um, you know, maybe this is now where the user respond, user feedback. Okay. Um, I'm not going to worry about that other stuff yet. This is going to be on the first row, and this is going to be in the third column. So I just type that. And that's all I need to worry about when I first create it. Then I can go ahead and do my arrows and adjustments. Um, so let's go ahead and give it a different background color. Um, make this one pink. And maybe we'll make it where every time the user does something, we'll make that a circle. So you could kind of have a correlation going there. Um, just to make those match up. So now that's a circle. And then the next thing, obviously I don't have my arrows, so I'll have an arrow coming out of the right side of my diamond. And then on my user feedback, I'll have an arrow coming into that from the left-hand side. And then um, I want my text size to be bigger, like I did with the other one. So I'll go to the um, font size and I'll make that larger just to make it easier to read and so on and you just can keep going this process can um, have many many steps it's really as many as you want to do um, you could have multi-directional arrows so I could for example 
uh, make the arrow connector point back as well and now you have uh, like a two-way thing if it goes into a step and comes back um, let me remove that there because I don't want to keep that um, and you can just keep growing your process diagram now what's good is obviously you wouldn't want to have your users mess around with your edit view once you have your um, flow chart built you're going to link and share the non-editable version. So you can see it's identical, but now when I'm clicking or hovering, it doesn't do anything. This is fully baked, uh, if you will. It's, it's all set, and then um, everybody can see that, but you're not going to have that edit mode going on. And that's really what you're shooting for. And you can build out sophisticated diagrams. So here's another one I did on another page, um, just for the sake of time, um, showing uh, a more built-out process. So um, in this case, I've got all those decisions in diamonds and um, you know, based, there's the branching logic. Based on what's going on here, it changes the path. So you can have different directions. Um, so you can see the questions there. Is there enough information on the ticket? Um, is the ticket resolved? And depending on that decision, it goes to different parts of the diagram. Another thing you can do is sometimes you don't have a shape in a square and there's a way you can do that um, by selecting some options in there. I'm going to show you how that works right now. So let me go to the edit mode and this doesn't have a shape. How did we pull that off? Okay, so there's an option here um, to designate for your shape. Instead of an actual shape, there are options at the bottom that are just lines. Okay, so if it's just a connector and you're not actually um, wanting to have a shape in here, that's how you can have that path going uh, between areas where there's not going to be a shape. Um, so there's every option you're going to need there. So you can have a shape going left and up or, you know, the other direction, or it could be an intersection. That's possible to do here uh, across lines. So that is the way that you can connect the shapes. Um, if you don't have an area where there's not going to be something in the diagram. And you just create it the same way that you did the other ones. It's just in this case, you pick that special shape, and obviously there's not going to be any text displayed in that situation. Okay, so that was the flowchart diagram, a very interesting one, really quite a lot different than some of the other charting we're doing, but still very useful. And really, to my knowledge, this is the only way that I've ever seen that you could generate a flowchart connected with a SharePoint list. Of course, there are other um, types of tools out there, but uh, what's different is you'd have to import that into SharePoint um, as an image or a PDF or something like this. Now you've got a native process where you can work directly in your SharePoint environment and build out processes and share that with your users um, right in SharePoint without ever having to leave the environment. Um, so generally pretty easy to work with. We don't have to do much with the um, SharePoint dashboards template itself. We can set the canvas background color, the overall size of the um, square in the background, um, and we set a title, but that's about it. Once we've applied the template onto our SharePoint list, we're going to be able to do all our work in SharePoint. We can make those incremental changes um, until we get that diagram to look just exactly how we want. Hope you found that fun and interesting. And the next time you go to map out a process for your team, I hope you uh, turn to that template and build it there directly in SharePoint so that you can share it with everybody um, and uh, not have to go and use external tools to get it done. Good luck.